You gotta switch sound. the sound. Oh. Oh. Me, well, we, don't, we don't have. Good morning. Is this on? I can't tell. Welcome in the name of Jesus Christ to the McCownville United Methodist Church. As United Methodist Christians, we are called to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. If you are, wor <coughs> excuse me, if you are worshiping in person this morning, you're strongly encouraged to wear a mask in church. All may join in aloud on the spoken prayers and on the songs if you're going to sing aloud during the songs, we ask that you do that only if you are three feet away from someone else that's not living in your household. The final two rows of the pews are reserved for folks wearing masks. Even if vaccinated, we ask that you keep your masks on. If you're from home, you may post your prayers on the Facebook feed. We will continue to uplift your prayers during this morning service and throughout the week. If you would like the church to be in touch with you, fill out a contact card and leave it at the offering plates that are in the back of the um, sanctuary. 
The offering this morning will be collected at the end of the worship. And during the service, there will be a offering. Then, as you exit, I'm not sure what's next. Oh, announcements. Are there any announcements? There are no announcements. Then we'll do a song. Please stand if you're able. Please join me in the opening prayer. Sovereign God, we call upon your spirit to equip and enable us to be the hands and feet of Christ to a world in need. There are those who have been displaced who need a safe haven, those who are hungry who need a filling meal and clean drinking water, those who are ill who need medicine. There are children who have been orphaned by violence, parents who are reeling from the loss of a child, teenagers left grief-stricken by hopelessness and despair, adults who long to provide for their families but are stuck in cycles of poverty. There are many who are grieving the loss of a loved one and need a friend to be there. There are many overwhelmed with situations that need a listening ear and a comforting hug. Into these situations, we are called to minister your love and grace to give generously and sacrificially with no thought of return or thanks to pray fervently and without ceasing, to go and serve as though we are serving Christ, to love unconditionally, press for justice, and hold the hope of those who have given up. Grant us, by the power of your spirit, the desire and the courage to wade into the struggles of our world because it is what Christ would have us do. Amen. And I thought you were going to get the whole candy bowl to yourself. Very good. Come on down. Don't be shy. There's candy involved. You can have some anyway. Oh, 
Well, it's good to see you. Good morning. Everybody, look at you. Hi. I'm Pastor Jeff. Hi there. Look at you like, oh, what? How's everyone today? <clears throat> well, I don't want to rain on your parade, but I do want to ask you a question. And I know, you know, there's been times when you've been really, really sad, right? And maybe somebody in your family passed away or, or a friend died or something like that. You're really, really sad, huh? Um, maybe it's a pet or something like that that died or lost or something like that. And when you're really, really sad, what is it that you want most of all? What would you like to have a friend do? Bring you huh? Bring you comfort. Bring you comfort? Come visit you? Yeah. Ice cream. Huh? Ice cream. Bring you ice cream? Anybody else? You've been there? You know what I mean? You ever had a friend that's really sad and lost a loved one or something bad has happened? And you ever feel like you don't know what to do for them? Huh? What have you done? Have you ever done anything to a friend that's grieving? What? Huh? Brought them ice cream? Spent time with them. Make something for them. Huh? You guys don't know what I'm talking about right now. <laughs> but you will, and it's okay. Just being here is the most important part. Um, yeah, it's uncomfortable. Some of us don't, but we all have. We're going to look at Job today, and you might have heard the story of Job. He lost everything, his family, his property, and then he got this disease that his skin was all breaking out with, and he was so sick and so sad. Huh? And his three friends, they, they messed up. They didn't do a good job. But at first, they did a couple things right. And the first thing they did was what you said. They went and visited him. And they just, when they got there, you know what they did? They sat on the ground in silence for seven days. And they were just there and listened. You know what that's called? That's called the ministry of presence. Just being with somebody. It cheers them up. If I was sad and you came over, little one, yeah, I would cheer up quick. I'm going to tell you right now, you're doing it right this minute. But, um, yeah, to be with them, to listen and just be there. And you know what else is good? God said for us to weep with those who weep, to laugh with those who laugh and weep with those who weep. So sometimes it's let them see your tears, to just go be with them and to cry with them, huh? Show them that you care. You can't say anything, but they know you care sometimes when you just share tears with somebody, yes? So the thing we want to learn is to just share in our sadness and share together and be not avoid. A lot of people say, I don't know what to do. So you know what they do? Nothing. They don't even do anything because they feel uncomfortable when somebody's hurting. But there's so many people around us hurting. We need to be disciples of Jesus and go and share in their pain and suffering with them, don't we? Huh? Yeah. Any other thoughts you're thinking? Yeah. You have, you have a, a care dog that goes with you and comforts you, right? Just put by being with you, right? That's cool. That's what we can do, too. Let's pray together. Gracious God, we thank you for... We know that you weep when we weep and you are with us, and we thank you for friends and family and disciples that come to our side and comfort us and, and just be with us in our sadness and, and our grief, Lord. Help us to do the same, and for what those have done with us, let us do for others. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. And now, there it is. There's some candy <coughs> sticks and whatever you want there. Help yourself, okay? Thanks for coming down. It's so good to see you all. God bless you. Thank you. Please stand if you're able and join us.
Yeah, good to be together. Jesus, Jesus, come and fill your lambs. We need to be filled with Jesus, don't we, huh? Comforted. Um, just the hope and the peace and the joy that Jesus can instill in us is so good. So we pray together this morning, and there are several prayers that I've been handed here. I'm praying for the family a uh, friend of Melissa, who has been diagnosed with prostate cancer. Pray for, of course, the family of uh, uh, Phyllis Veely. We celebrated her life yesterday. And family of the Lizers, um, for Ralph Lizer, we will celebrate uh, his life on Tuesday. Um, any others that you have this morning? Yes. Jim. Friend in the hospital for Jim, we lift him up. Pray for God's healing mercies and God's presence with him. Um, Judy. Praise God. Family reunion. Everybody got together. You didn't think it would, but it did. What a blessing. Thank God for that. Yes. Yes, Dorothy and Henry are back with us post-COVID. Yeah. And, um, yes. Yeah, Lelena took a fall in Italy and had to cut her trip short her, and is back home now and needs prayer for healing and headaches and all that goes with that post fall and hit her head and got a stitch in there. So keep praying for her. I'm aware of another um, celebration of life I think we'll be doing soon. The family's called about uh, graveside for their son and we'll be celebrating that when I meet with them this week. We lift you in prayer, yes. Um, God bless you. My heart goes out to all of you that are grieving today. We're going to talk about that. Yes. Yeah. Amen. We lift that up. Celebrations of life. A lot of those who passed away and the providers lost eight patients. And yeah, there's a lot of grief, a lot of heaviness, isn't there? Huh? Anyone else have anything? I have some joys, a couple joys, I think, here anyway. Maybe you have a couple to share. But today happens to be my third wedding anniversary to that girl right there, Melissa. who God brought into my life, and I am so very, very grateful for her. And God bless you, dear. Happy anniversary. Um, any other celebrations, concerns? Let's take some time then to just be in prayer and lift up those prayers. And if you're not sure what to pray for, pray for one another, for the person to your left, right, before you, behind you. Um, let's just have some time together in prayer before God.
Jesus, oh Jesus, come and fill your lambs this morning. Here we are before you, Jesus, and we need you to fill us, to touch those places in our life where we are hurting, where we have fears and concerns, where our hearts are broken, where we are grieving. And we lift up all those anywhere who may be grieving today also. Pray for your comfort and your peace. Help us to be your disciples, Lord, and to use our grief to go and comfort those who are in grief as well, Lord. We thank you that you do weep with us and that you are empathizing and in, in, in it with us and you shed tears with us as we do with one another. We pray for all anywhere who are suffering in body, mind, or spirit. We thank you for the caregivers that come to their sides, Lord, and we pray for healing for all those in need of that healing. We celebrate those celebrations we've mentioned, and my niece Julie, too, I lift her up before you in the prayers for her as well. For the celebrations in life and in the midst of it, the grief, Lord, and for all who are stuck in addictions or, or in broken relationships or feeling last, lost, lonely, or the least, help them to know, Lord, that they are precious in your sight. They are children of God and people of worth. We thank you for your comfort, Lord. We thank you for your peace and for your presence. Thank you for hearing our concerns and our joys, Lord, and we come before you as your children, and we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Today's scripture reading is from the book of Job, chapter 2, verses 11 through 13. When Job's three friends... Eliphaz, Bildad, and Zophar heard about all the troubles that had come upon him. They set out from their homes and met together by agreement to go and sympathize with him and comfort him. When they saw him from a distance, they could hardly recognize him. They began to weep aloud and they tore their robes and sprinkled dust on their heads. Then they sat on the ground with him for seven days and seven nights. No one said a word to him because they saw how great his suffering was. <clears throat> May the Lord bless the reading, hearing, and understanding of this holy word. Thank you. Well, I was... Uh, reading some articles this week as I was made more aware of a lot of the violence and shootings and death and grief going on around the world and around us. And I found out that this year's 4th of July weekend, just a few weeks ago, a time when Americans gather together for barbecues and parades and fireworks, 
The celebration was marred by violence, rattling a nation that is already on edge in the wake of multiple mass shootings. In the Chicago suburb of Highland Park, seven people were killed. 47 others were injured when a gunman opened fire from a rooftop into a parade and the festivities below. Death from gunfire rocked our cities across the country. In New York City, on the 4th of July, 13 people were shot and three killed in six incidents across the city. In Gary, Indiana, three people were killed and seven people were wounded after a gunman or gunfire erupted at a 4th of July block party. In Kansas City, Missouri, six people were shot in three separate incidents. Two people died in the violence. In Richmond, Virginia, six people, four men, two women, were shot early Monday, July 4th. In Hawthorne City, Texas, three officers and one civilian were injured in a shooting. One person was killed and four others were injured in Kenosha, Wisconsin. Two people were killed in the city of Albany, New York. And these are only a few that made the headlines. And then last Sunday, three people were killed at a mall in Greenwood, Indiana, and a 12-year-old and another person were seriously wounded. On Monday, in Memphis, Tennessee, Reverend Artura Eason, the district superintendent of the Tennessee Western Kentucky Conference of the United Methodist Church, died after she was shot in a carjacking outside her, to her home in Wichita, Tennessee. Friends, today I ask you to pray for our nation, but even more to pray for these grieving parents, family, friends of all these who have died. You are going to quickly forget this horror that's going on right now, and you're going to move on with your life. But they are going to have to carry this grief for the rest of their lives. So please, don't forget them. Besides these shootings, 6.3 million people have died from COVID, leaving millions and millions of relatives and friends grieving grieving their losses. And right here in our congregation, we have had three families who have lost loved ones in the past week. There are also several others who are grieving the loss of loved ones in the past. So what are we supposed to do about all this grief in the world? Huh? Disciples of Jesus, what are we supposed to do? If you're a Christian, God expects you to help others in their pain and in their grief. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3 and 4 tells us that God comforts us in our troubles so that we can comfort others in their troubles with the same comfort that we ourselves have received from God. God helps us in the midst of our problems, of our grief, so that we can help other people with their problems and their grief. And we can comfort them with the comfort that we have received. Considering all of the pain and the grieving in this world today, I just want to look at how we can make that happen. How we can help someone who is in deep need, who is in deep pain, who is in deep grief. We just can't stand by and do nothing. Do you know what to do? Are you prepared to help your friends when they go through the inevitable grief of life? Do you feel prepared? I can guarantee you that you and everybody around you are going to experience loss, sadness, and grief because we live on a planet that is broken by sin, and by being mortal, death is inevitable. So how 
can you help when you don't know what to do, when you don't know what to say? I hear this all the time. I just don't know what to say. This is a skill that we need to develop. And I want to begin with Proverbs chapter 17 and verse 17 from the Amplified Translation. And it says this, a friend loves you at all times and is born as a brother or sister for adversity. <clears throat> Did you catch that? Born for adversity. True friendship shows up best in troubled times. A friend is born for those times that you are in crisis, when you're in a rut, when you're in grief, when you hit a major loss. So let me ask you a pointed question. Who is it that can count on you as a friend right now? They know for certain that you are going to walk into their life when no one else does. You see, if you only show up in happy times, you're not a real friend. You're just an acquaintance. Real friends help you carry your grief when you are overwhelmed. Real friends show up in the bad times, not just in the good times. Romans 12, 15 says this, laugh with your happy friends when they are happy and share tears with them when they are down. Share tears. According to Paul, a true friend is one who shares tears when your friend is in pain or grieving. Huh? Tears. Tears. They are a mark of love. They are a mark of friendship. Share tears. Today we're going to learn some quick steps to take to help you help someone who is deep pain or grief by looking at the example of Job's friends in Scripture. Now, most of you may know the story of Job, how he lost literally everything overnight. He lost his health. He lost all of his kids. He lost his entire family. They were killed. He lost his crops. He lost his wealth, all of his savings, everything. And then he got a terrible chronic disease that was painful, nonstop painful. Everything happened wrong in just a matter of hours in Job's life. <clears throat> now, Job's friends, if you ever read the story or heard the story, have made a bunch of mistakes in how they handled Job's suffering. But what you don't often hear about is the stuff they did right. In fact, the first three things that they did were the exact three things to do when you have a friend who is in pain, suffering, grieving, or anything else. It was, not only, it was only after they started speaking their opinions that Job's friends got into trouble. But at first, at first, Job's friends did things exactly right. And these are the things the first three steps that we need to take when you see somebody grieving, when you see somebody in deep pain, whether they are a friend or a stranger. Number one, when you see someone in pain, when you see somebody struggling, huh? don't wait. Take the initiative to connect. A common mistake that people make <clears throat> is that because they don't feel comfortable, like I said, around people who have had a loss or are grieving, they say, I don't know what to say or do. So they do nothing. They wait for the other person to contact them. That's not going to happen. You have to take the initiative. This is the first thing that Job's three friends did correctly. Job Chapter 2, verse 11 says this. When Job's friends heard about all the troubles that had come upon Job, they left 
their home, okay? Okay, they left their home. And they agreed to go together and sympathize with Job and comfort him. They go. They go into his house. They are taking the initiative. They're not waiting for him to call. They go together to comfort their friend. Listen, somebody probably needs your comfort this week. You might want to write their name down right now and say, I need to contact whoever this is. You've been thinking about them. I know they are in pain. I know that they're having a hard time. Take the initiative to connect with them this week, all right? Here's the second thing. Share your tears. Huh? Don't hold back. Don't hold back. This is the second thing that Job's friends did right, and it's what we need to do when we see or hear of someone in pain. They didn't just sympathize. I'm so sorry that you're hurting. They empathized. We hurt with you. They entered into his pain. They cried with him. They were not ashamed to shed tears. It's okay. They're a gift from God. They're cleansing. They're healing. Verse 12. When Job's friends saw him from a distance, remember, they're going to visit their friend who has lost everything. When Job's friends saw him from a distance, they hardly recognized him. He was in so much pain and grief, and he had this terrible disease that they hardly recognized him. And it says they began to weep out loud. That's in public, okay? They were weeping out loud, and it says, then they tore their clothes in grief, and they threw dust in the air over their heads as a sign of sadness. Those last two actions are ancient ways to express grief. Ripping your clothes and throwing dust in the air over your head were signs of grief. And everybody in that time and that tradition would have understood what they were doing. Now, you may not have to do those last two things, but weeping and crying is still a universal language that is understood around the world weeping and crying. So first, take the initiative. Don't wait. Number two, don't hold back. Let them see your tears. Okay, here's number three. Show up and be quiet. You say, I don't know what to say. That's okay, that's good. Say nothing. That's the best thing you can do. Don't speak. Let them see it through your tears. There's nothing that you can say when somebody is in pain that's going to cheer them up. And in fact, they are not looking or do they want or need to be cheered up. When we grieve, we go through grief in waves. One minute you can handle it, next minute you can't. And your waves don't match the waves of your spouse or of anybody else. So that can create conflict in families because everybody grieves differently in different ways and at different times. There is nothing that's going to make someone feel any better. There are no words that you can say when people are going through pain or grief. It's just show up, be there. It's called the ministry of presence. The ministry of presence, being with them. Third thing that Job's friends teach us is this. Job 2, <clears throat> verse 13. Then Job's friends sat on the ground with him, and notice this, in silence for seven days and nights. That is friendship. They sat on the ground with a guy who'd lost everything in silence for seven days and seven nights. No one said a word to him because they saw how great his suffering was. 
So when you have a friend in pain, huh? don't wait. Take the initiative to connect. <clears throat> Let them see your tears. And don't speak. We want to say something that's going to make it better. You can't. Be there. Be there with them. There's one final thing that you need to do, and it's this. Don't forget. Remember, all tears are temporary. No matter how bad the pain or grief in that moment, it will not and it cannot last forever. Because one day, God is going to settle the score. God's going to soothe all our hurts, we are promised. Three times in scripture, God promises that one day, tears will no longer be needed. Three times. So I want to close this message with those three verses, with these three great promises. First is Isaiah 25 and verse 8. And it says this, the sovereign Lord will destroy death forever. So there'll be no more death is what it says. God will wipe away the tears from everyone's eyes and take away the disgrace of God's people, what they have suffered throughout the world. You may have suffered abuse. You may have suffered disgrace, rejection. You may have suffered betrayal. And it says that God can take and will take all that away one day. Don't forget, remember, that's the first promise in scripture. The second promise is in Revelation 7 and verse 17. And this is the scene in heaven. Then the lamb on the throne, that's Jesus. Then the lamb on the throne will shepherd them and lead them. Them, that's us. Lead them to springs of living water. And here's the second time we hear in scripture. It says, God will wipe every last tear from their eyes. Every tear is temporary. There will be a time where there will be no more tears. Hard to think of. That's the promise. Imagine it. And the last verse is Revelation 21, and it's at the very end of the Bible. And it's verse 4 through 7, and it says this, Then God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. That's the third time that it's said, and God speaks it in Scripture. There will be no more death and no more mourning, and no more crying and no more pain. For the old order of things has passed away. And then he who is seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. And he said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega. I am the beginning and the end. To those who are thirsty, I will give drink without cost from the spring of the water of life. And those who overcome will inherit all of this. And I will be their God, and they will be my children. No more tears. That, friends, is a scene worth shedding some tears over right now. Tears of joy, tears of hope, because no matter what you're going through, it's not going to last. And one day, those three verses are going to happen, and there will be no more death and no more sorrow, no more pain and no more grief. No more criticism, no more rejection, no more betrayal, no more illness, no more cancer, and no more death. God will wipe every tear away. Now listen, I don't know how you need this message today. It may be to help you in some current grief. It may be that a secret that you are hiding, and you're hiding your grief. Or it may be that God wanted you to have this message to help a friend who is in grief. The world is full of people who are grieving right now, full. They're all around you. 
And if you care, you will take time to be aware. Either way, you are going to need these principles someday, and you are going to need God for eternity. Let's bow our heads. We thank you, God, that you grieve, weep, and empathize with us when we are in pain. And we know that when we are in pain, you are in pain. Our feelings are meant to be felt. So I ask you this morning, have you been holding them in? Friends, don't suppress them. Express them to God. And I want you to ask God to help you to be a blessing to others. In a world that's full of pain, you are called to help others in pain. So pray with me, Lord, help me not to wait when I see someone in pain, but to take the initiative to connect. And Lord, give me the courage to not hold back, but to weep with those who weep as you've commanded. God, help me to be like Job's friend who sat on the ground in silence and didn't say a word, but just were there with the ministry of presence. And Lord, when I start to get discouraged and when I am grieving, when I am sad or when I feel lonely or empty, help me to remember that all tears are temporary. And then pray this with me. Jesus, come into my life right now and fill me with your love. Fill my emptiness with your peace. Fill my grief with your love. Fill my life with your life. I humbly ask this in your name. Amen. God gives us are abundant. So often we fail to notice them or thank God for them. So this morning we gather and out of gratitude and thankfulness to God, we, we bring an offering before God. And again, I thank you for your faithfulness in your offering that allows us to, to be disciples, to grow, to offer this building and to offer our ministries to others who are grieving and need some place to come and some place to find healing and peace. Your offerings matter, and again, I thank you, and we gather, and we, we pray, Lord, as we receive these offerings today, that uh, you would bless them and bless us by your Holy Spirit, inspire us to be wise disciples, to be good stewards, to use them in ways that transform lives and bring about healing for those who are grieving and hurting in this world, to change this world and to be instruments of your peace within it. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 
And now as you go from this place, go and the title of the message today, what can I do for you? Look around, who is it that needs you today? Maybe it's you that needs it today. Look to your neighbors. And I pray that we will take that comfort that we've found and bring it to others and grieve together and find that healing. And remember, God is with you as you go. So go in peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.